Hey, what's going on YouTube? Orstorm here coming at you guys with another episode of the Intro 2 series. This is something where I profile some of the new decks from the latest deck. This is part of the Dark Illusion Week. Uh, yesterday I took a break bringing you guys Prediction Princess list. Today I'll be bringing you guys Metal Foes. And then and over the next few days I'll be also be bringing you Dark Magician and Should All Train. I'll be covering some tears and Spirals a little bit separately. But overall I'm actually really happy with the archetypes. So, or, so let's go ahead and we'll get started with Metal Foes. Obviously the archetype I am the most excited for. So the main thing we're going to be covering today is is with Metal Foes is that they are, a, if you don't know what they are, they are a pendulum-based um, archetype that are sort of like a hybrid between Ignites and um, Fire Fist. Instead of uh, like Ignites where they would pop themselves to search more Ignites, Metal Foes actually pop a face-up card to set any Metal Foes spell or trap from straight from your deck. So hence the Ignite plus... Um, plus uh, they're, they're vanillas like ignites, but they're also but they're also a little bit better because they pop face up cards and set straddles and traps directly from your deck, which is really good. Um, first off, we're gonna go some of the other kind of engines you can, or cards you can play with the deck because the archetype only currently has four monsters and three fusions, and that's really not enough to fill out an archetype. Um, you, can, you can play Yang Zings in the deck. This is actually the version I'm actually building, um, but I haven't. I'm not gonna showcase the list to you guys yet because I'm gonna still I'm waiting for the sneak to get all the cards I need. But Yang Zings are probably one of the better variants you can play because you can use the metal foes to pop the yang zings and if you open yang zings or if you open um, a, a yang zing monster that three yang zing cards and a metal foe you can kind of just go off from there fire kings are another great um option metal foes and fire kings just kind of work together because you pop your, you can pop easily pop your garunix you can also play um, fire king island and maybe the metal foe field spell kind of with terraform you give you a little bit of an engine um Speaking of uh, field spells, playing Perform Pals and Sky Iris, playing um, playing like an Odd Eyes Perform Pal Metal Foe deck is definitely not the worst thing in the world. The great thing about this is this does trigger your Metal Foe counter. Whenever a card you control is popped by a card effect, you get to special some Metal Foe from your deck. It's kind of nice that it triggers that. Um, Iris is, can do the same thing, so it's really nice. Um, and for the other uh, Metal Foe cards you don't see in this list, um, metal, the, this this is actually in the Dark Illusions, the field spell. Its effect is while you control a Metal Foe, Foe, a metal foe card in your Pendulum Zone, none affect Metal Foe monster. Those well monsters you control are unaffected by opponent's card effects. The problem is the main cards you're going to be summoning are Aura Hulk, and Aura Hulk is not an effect monster. That's the unfortunate thing. The card is okay, but I just don't see its usage in a lot of the Metal Foe decks that play. Now, as far as support the deck will be getting in the future, in the next set, they're getting a fusion that can basically um, bounce. It's a level 6. What it does is you can target two Metal Foe, foe cards in your graveyard and one card in the field. Show off the first target, target into the deck and it targets into the deck, and if you do, you can turn the second target to hand. And the other thing is that if it's since the field graveyard, you can special summon a Metal Foe Pendulum Monster from your extra deck or graveyard, which is really nice. Overall, it's a pretty solid card, card but um, and the main thing is it helps the deck, is that this kind of fits where Ignites really didn't have, it's just a way to recycle their plays, which is really nice. Metal, full Metal Foe Outcast is an interesting card. Like, I didn't think the card was that good until I saw the obviously new fusion spell. We'll get to it in a minute. Basically, it is a snatch deal out of your opponent's turn, and it gains defense equal to that monster. Monsters. So basically, like say you're, you have Alkist out, and your opponent tries to go for a Cyberjack Nova to go into Infinity, you can snatch their Nova mid combo. It's great interrupting cards. Speaking of combos, interrupters, four Metal Foes is Fusion. It's essentially a El Shadal Fusion for Metal Foes. The, the different thing about this, though, is that you do have to hard draw it unless you're going to use it for Alkest. But I, that was the first my first thoughts, but then you realize that Alkest, you can actually set the fusion spell from your deck and then make Alkist on your turn and disrupt your opponent's plays. That's probably one of the better combos the deck currently ha will have when everything is at full power. Um, do I think the deck can be competitive right off the bat? Definitely not, but I think maybe it, it, it has a better chance once we get, you know, a lot of the top tier decks get out of the way once we see Cosmos, maybe get a few initial hits. I do think that this deck can definitely thrive as it does in the OCG. So, okay, let's go ahead and get to deck profiles. First off, we have two Volflame. Volflame is the only high level monster. You can play Summoner's Art to search it, but I don't think Volflame is the uh, best. It has this, all Metal Foes, like I said, have the same effect. You could, they, when they're in the Pendulum Zone, they can pop a card you, a face-up card you control to destroy it and then set a Metal Foe card from your deck. Um, 
three and all three of the other monsters currently in the archetype because they are painful decision targets. They all have the same effect as the level four, the level three, and the level two. The only thing I would say that's relevant about the level two is that if you're playing the Yang Zing variant, a lot this card allows you to go into um, so let's you easily go into Nirvana High Paladin. Now for the um, uh, more generic support, we have the Draco Engine here. I feel like the Draco Engine has the most synergy with the deck. Like if you're playing at a more pure level, um, um, Luster one of the and one of the best combos in the deck, in fact, involves Luster because being able to one things you can do is say you open Luster in a Metal Foe scale, you can put Luster, put the scale up, Luster away the scale, then put the scale you just searched, then pop the Luster and send it to your extra deck to set a card from your deck. So it allows you to stack your extra deck very very quickly. Um, these are basically kind of the common ratios. You see one vector, one rector, one Luster, and two masters. You can play three masters if you wish, but I played it down to two for space issues. One copy of Rescue Rabbit, you have a plethora of targets and all your metal foes and your um, your masters, and it just opens and floodgates up for ridiculous plays. Two copies of Angel Trumpeter, probably, one of, in my opinion, one of the best cards to come out in Shining Mysteries, is a level 4 vanilla tuner, so you can special summon it from deck with Unexpected Die, and it is just a good, and it has synergy with the deck because it is a vanilla monster. Then we have, of course, you know, the two, two Bumbokus and the three Kittens. Um, Kittens is just such a good disruptive card in the current format that I felt that it was worth, definitely worth including. I don't think Kieran is really the problem with Pendulums on its own. I definitely think that the problem is the heavy surging the decks do have. I think it's the only reason they, a lot of the pendulum decks even are viable. So might just, that's one of the reasons why. But in this, but honestly, I think Kieran is like having Babuku and Kieran is kind of staple. You can also play Avians as well, but I just felt like Kieran is good enough on its own. Next up for the spells, we have the Wonder Geki for clearing off those Monarchs and clearing Domain. Twin Sisters for clearing back pesky strikes because the deck loses to Solemn Strike. One Draco face off the maximum you can play. The two painful decisions, this is actually one of the best cards in the deck because you can dump one of your Metal Foe monsters to search it, and then you if you have a set if you have a combination active and you fusion summon, you can then special summon the monster that's in the graveyard that you dumped by a decision. So the nice thing about Metal Foes is that your monsters do end up in the graveyard, unlike Ignites, you actually have ways to access them so it's really nice then of course the three unexpected dies because i feel like it's kind of like a hero lives like you want to it's a for consistency reasons you want to see it going first turn so you kind of have to max out on last two spells two copies of metal foes a metal foe fusion i do play two because um i a lot of players i do notice they play one but i think with cosmic cyclone coming out it's going to be important for you to have that second one so i kind of and it's a really powerful fusion spell fell because you can cycle it back into the deck and draw a card which is really good it in fact fusion, it, I, when i first read the card i thought it was nuts a fusion spell that actually replaces itself back in the deck for the traps, we have two Metal Foe Counters. Counters is really good whenever a card is destroyed by battle or card effect. You can special summon a Metal Foe monster from your deck, and during either player's turn, turn it has that annoying breakthrough skill clause. You can banish it from your grave to add one Metal Foe Pendulum monster from your extra deck to your hand. So say your opponent Twin Twisters your scales, you can activate this in grave to recycle. It's really good. Then two copies of Metal Foe Combination. Combination's effect is once per turn, if a fusion monster is fusion summon, you can target one metal foe monster in your graveyard whose level is less than that monster and special summon it. And then if it sends the field to the graveyard, it searches a metal foe monster. In the Yang Zing variant in particular, this card is one of the best cards in the deck because it has so much synergy with cards like Storm, for example. And then we have the one warning to round off our trap lineup. Then for the um, extra deck, we have two copies of or or Hulk. I think it's OCG TCG name is or Calc or something like that. But this is the easily the best card in the deck. Whenever a metal foe monster attacks a defense position monster, it inflicts double piercing damage to your opponent. So notice a lot of metal foe Yang Zing players. What they'll do is they'll leave their monsters like their Chai Winds and stuff in defense mode, which makes it easy play for your or or a Hulk to get in a ton of damage, and it ends games on its own. And it's also level eight, which means you can make Titanic Galaxy with it, which is really nice. We have the one Adam and Titan, the one Cardinal. I only play one of each of these because they synergize with the combination. If you feel like you don't need these, you're more than welcome to cut them, but they're kind of just here to fill out the extra deck. I think these these will probably be the new fusions for it would be the new fusions when they come out in Evasion of Venom. We have the two Dynasters, the one Ignister. This is these are kind of like because you're playing the Dracos, you kind of play two Dynaster, one Ignister, maximum Ignisters you can play. The one Scarlight. Scarlight is actually has a lot of Surprising synergy with the deck because whenever you all your um, metal foe monsters are vanilla monsters, so the interesting thing with Scarlight is you can um, nuke, you can activate its effect, and then your metal foe monsters won't die because they are vanilla monsters. 
it only hits effect monsters, which is really neat. One copy of Stardust Dragon. A Stardust is really good in this deck because it keeps your scales from getting twin twisted and just and gets rid of deals with annoying removal. Then for the Exceeds, we have the one Paladin Master, Mr. Paladin. You are playing the Draco engine, so you play Paladin. You win Castell. Oh, like I said before, Castell, it's love, Castell's life. It gets over, it gets rid of annoying problem threats. You kind of have to play it. One Utopia, Utopia Beyond, and the one, uh, one Utopia Lightning and the Utopia Beyond. Utopia Beyond is something, like, I feel like if you can go into it, you should. You can overlay two Kirins to go into this, and it ends games on its own. You can probably play something else, like a, maybe like a 101 or whatever in its place, but I kind of like just like I'm I'm obviously biased for this card. And of course, you have the one Titanic Galaxy. Um, obviously, with the one Ignister, it's not optimal to always go into this. But the thing is, you don't necessarily need your Ignister to make um, Titanic Galaxy because Aura Hulk is level eight, as I stated earlier. So anyway, guys, as always, I thank you guys for watching the video today. I always appreciate it when you guys watch my videos here on Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content, and if you like what you saw from this video, please subscribe to Storm. signing out.